Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. And not a single postcard. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SCN on TV podcast for the Vampire Diaries, Season 7, Episode 12, Postcards from the Edge. I'm here with Dom, with me, my co-hosts, Mike. Very disappointed there were no postcards. Not a single one. Uh, Nikki. Hi. Hi. And Kim. Hi. Hi. How's it going? I just matched everybody's enthusiasm. <laughs> So, uh, what would you guys think of this episode? Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Stuff. I mean, Stuff. I don't know what the highlight was for everybody else, but I was very happy to see Julian go. That was know. a highlight just because it was surprising. Hmm. I don't think it happened. I think Damon's still in the Phoenix, though. <laughs> I, Here I we am. go. Definitely surprised that they they killed him off. I didn't I didn't think we were gonna see that for I don't even know like a while. I thought this would be like the end is when we would get him. You know he's killed off. But I'm like okay, well I mean now we're gonna switch focus to Rain the up. yeah yeah. So that that'll be the that'll be the new focus, which makes sense because that's supposed to be where it's leading to. Mm-hmm. So it would be time to change from one problem to another problem. Yeah, I mean typically Vampire Diaries has done a lot of that in the past. It's like the very, um, very early seasons, first couple ones, w- that was not the case. Like it was always, oh, Catherine, 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 and then season one, it's like, oh, hi, Catherine, right at the end, and then season two ends, and it's like Klaus, and you're like, okay, and mm-hmm. then season three, halfway, it was like the season three halfway point, it shifts it from Klaus to the whole fucking original family, you know, and it's just like, okay, there's a lot going on here, and then it seems like every time, just when you think it's like one thing it turns out to be something else yeah, you know like you know, changed it changed was... into esther and then michael and then alaric and then yes okay right. we get it and then elaine is dead and then <laughs> yeah so yeah you know there was all this but the for me the the um my favorite scene in the whole thing was the very first one with damon laying in the road it seems very season one to me it reminded me of damon playing possum in yeah. Was it the very first episode with the car? It was. It yeah. was the very first episode. It's actually, the very I think it's like the very first scene in the first episode it in is. the plot is him laying on the ground, and and you, that's the first thing you see anything is that. Yeah. Yeah. He he plays possum. He gets a couple off the road out of their vehicle, and he has noms. Mm-hmm. Nom nom. Mm-hmm. This this time we meet Cooper. Cooper. Right? Cooper. And uh, I don't know Damon. Just kind of needed a hug, right? He compelled a guy to just listen to him vent. <laughs> and drive him around. Him. You know. It's like, Cooper, I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> and he's like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Cooper was able to relate to Damon's problems, though. Like, he just backed over his girlfriend's cat. It's kind of the same thing. Sure. Yeah. It. I mean, it's the same thing as burning your girlfriend alive when she's in a sleep-induced coma, like mm-hmm. Sleeping Beauty. Mm-hmm. So, for reasons, I don't know, but uh, a scene that really stood out for me was when Stefan finally finds out what Damon did, and Stefan just starts beating the piss out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then just, he goes off the deep end. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, wow, so Stefan is still in love with Elena. Oh, that, we, that, that's... That, yeah, it was a given, but he, it's been very, like... Is it, distant, is it the like, fact that he's in love with her, though? Because, like, I, I can't say that's necessarily true. Like, if someone killed my best friend, I would do the exact same thing that Stefan did. Ah, okay. I mean, so, yeah, I guess that makes sense, too. I don't I, know. I can't I, necessarily I, say he's in love with her. Like, maybe he is. I, I can't say for sure. You know, I'm I'm not Stefan. I can't tell that. But he was clearly upset. I mean, Elaine is still, regardless, a big part of his life. His afterlife. His whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. and not to mention she also kept you know Damon from being ridiculous, which is what he's doing right now, being ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. But um, just having him march right into Julian's bar to start shit, 
Like, he definitely had a death wish. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Throw what? What did he throw? A signpost to decapitate that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for a moment, I thought it was like I was like, did he get like a throwing card? But then I realized how big like, it did was. Did he pull a <laughs> gambit? Yeah. Yeah. It was I more was like scared. one of those like long like no smoking signs, you know, like. That, that's what I I don't know exactly the sign it was but that's that's what I pictured it as I just pictured him ripping like the no smoking sign steel sign off the wall the aluminum whatever it is and just chucking it so. effective no matter yeah. what it was mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but it's like Damon knows he's hallucinating like all this stuff all like and he never thought to like have somebody check to see if Elena was okay because we we saw in the future that flash forward that she's fine, like supposedly. Well, we didn't see in. We just saw. We, we saw, saw the casket. The casket. He... Yeah, but it was referenced. So, like at, at this point now, knowing that Stefan knows, right, and Damon knows, they made reference to to Elena. So. In the future. Yeah. So. We, we can pretty much safely assume that Elena's okay, and he was probably hallucinating that whole thing. Either that or the magic. Because um, if I remember correctly, they couldn't even open the casket. Yeah, it was, it was magically, magically sealed. sealed. Magically sealed, yeah. I think the only person who could have undone the spell is Bonnie. I don't even think she could have. I think that was the whole thing that Kai put on there in the first place. Uh, or um, their mother, rather. Their mother. Yeah, it was a very powerful spell. So... I don't. I don't think Bonnie by herself would have been able to do it. Because well, um, Kai linked it, and I specifically remember him saying, "If you tried any kind of foolery with it, it would kill Elena." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So shouldn't even be able to open it. Period. No matter what, because right. Elena would be dead. So I don't know. That's why I feel like something's up with that. And you yeah, know what? And I mean, you can go back to Tyler, like sneaking yeah. around. Like he shows Dame in this casket, and then he's like sneaking around, like, "All right, I'm gonna knock you the fuck out now." Yeah. yeah, what about Tyler? Like, we haven't seen him. Yeah, he got his, his noggin knocked onto the ground big time. He put his tail between his legs and ran into the bayou. Maybe. Or, you know, he's, you know, recovering, because he still can do that. And he's going to... Stefan's going to get in contact with him or something and going to find out what really happened. Mm. Like, it was a different casket. Like, he didn't take it into the same casket. He made mm. a different one. Or... He had a decoy. He yeah. very well may have, just yeah. to... um fuck over, not fuck over, but like protect himself to cover, you know, Elena and knowing that Damon was going to be do something stupid, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, I think he would have resisted more if he didn't have a setup, like a plan B. Mm-hmm. So. Very true. Could be. Um, but Damon joining Julian's fight club was, uh, was kind of interesting. It was interesting. He went three rounds, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Said no weapons. <laughs> yeah, no weapons. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Wait, mm. there's rules in this anarchy? What? <laughs> it didn't seem like there were any rules. It just seemed like win by any means necessary. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden there's rules, so. Well, I guess it makes sense. If you put weapons in, into into the, the mix, I think it makes it a little too much. I mean, they're vampires. You can't kick the shit out of another person it with just... I mean, I know as as their age, if you're older, you're more powerful. Mm-hmm. But still. Yeah. And Stefan and Damon are far from the oldest, most powerful vampires out there. They're still no. considered babies. Yep. They're a lot older than some of those little guys oh. that they had in there. Well, yeah. There was yeah, a lot of little sure. guys. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, Damon would have been dead meat if it wasn't for that girl that tossed the stake to yeah. him. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, who the fuck was that? I think she's working with Reyna. Yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Huh. I huh. was thinking at first it was Reyna. So did I. But, you know, looking at, you know, the pictures and everything and, you know, seeing her face again, it didn't, rec- right. like, there wasn't enough familiarity with Elena because that's what we see right now looking at the actress just offset. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I think she's working with Reyna. Yeah. Hmm. I can see that. It's very possible. 
speaking um, of which, we finally got to see Reyna. We did. Mm-hmm. Ish. No, we yeah. did. Yeah. No, we did. We got to see her old self, you know, stuck up in that insane asylum, you know, all, you know, leashed up and everything. And then we got to see her reincarnated, which is the Reyna we are going to learn to accept because... And then we got Enzo. Oh, I was Enzo so happy to see him. Back. Who came back? Who we haven't seen in episodes. So what the fuck, Enzo? Where did you come from? We could assume that the people who took him are part of Reyna's little hunting gang, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Since, well, it's something. I mean, he took her, knew how to reincarnate re-carn- her. Which makes sense. Voice. She uses a sword with <laughs> the Phoenix Stone. She's reborn mm-hmm. like a phoenix. Yeah. Right. I mean, because it was stated that it was specially crafted for her. Right. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting the so. fire part, but as soon as, like, she died, like, she's this old woman, I'm like, all right, endowed with lo- long, you know, near immortality, and you're some ancient old woman in a bed, I can't see this. And then Enzo throws the knife at her, I'm like, that was it. She's going to come back as a young woman. That was it, right there. Mm-hmm. But, okay, I was a little wrong. <laughs> yeah. Just a wee bit. Um. I thought, like, she had some, like, body-swapping powers at first, and that this lady had some memories, like, some residue from Reyna, and wasn't really her anymore. Oh, like, she swapped into another body? Yeah, but that would have been the case. I mean, the only person we've seen swap into bodies before is Klaus, and we've never seen him do it outside of, like, season two, I Mm -hmm. think it was. Yeah. Yeah, when he switched blood completely, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was in Alaric. Yes. So, um, I don't know, but, uh, so her full name is Rana Cruz, which, uh, Cruz is Spanish for cross. Mm -hmm. So she's, I don't know, like, is, is maybe she has some kind of religious connotations to her? That makes sense. Probably. Well, it's, it's shamans. Yeah, they, the so shamans were the one that spelled her to be a vampire huntress in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're also the ones that, that crafted her sword and supposedly the Phoenix Stone. Well, um, are, would, it, would they be under the same same uh, like concept as the other hunters, you know? Wonder. It seems different because she, different, yeah. she's, she was given um, extraordinary strength uh, and eternal life. Which, that's definitely not the case of Jeremy and some of the other hunters that we ran into. Mm-hmm. No, theirs is definitely more, um, I want to say tribal, but it's not. I say it's tribal because of the tattoos they get, but... Um, I mean, but we saw that that went all the way back to, like, when the original vampires were created. So that thing yeah. is thousands of years old. Yeah. You know, where where it's this... Ancient. Yeah, this doesn't seem nearly as old, No. but old enough seems like it has a little bit more power behind it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Immortality and all of, that, all of that pretty much rise from the ashes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, there's, it's kind of like going up okay, the vampire route. I mean, there's one. There's one slayer. There's one vampire hunter in this case. Yeah. Huh. A little bit different, but... A wee bit different. Yeah, a little. The whole one thing. But, it, yeah, it is the... We had a lot of, ma- but she, but technically she isn't the only one. Uh, she's the only one of her kind like mm-hmm. that, as far yeah, as like you know, the, I mean. The, the, the coming back to life. Is- vampire hunter is gonna, you know, they're gonna throw stakes or shoot stakes out of a crossbow or use wooden bullets or whatever. No, she's got a sword specifically designed to steal their soul, mm-hmm. and she's immune to magic. Right, mm-hmm. and it's funny that she came out to like Bonnie, you know, as opposed to you know Nora or. Or Mary Lou. Well, they're vampires as well as witches, whereas Bonnie's just a witch. Right, but Bonnie came in with them. So she clearly has some ties to vampires. Why would the vampire hunter reveal herself like that? Because she had. She can overpower Bonnie. Because Plus. without. Yeah. Without magic, Bonnie is just a person. Mm hmm. Nothing supernatural about her. And if you're immune to magic, guess what? A witch is just as, you know, it's just a normal, everyday person. So here's something interesting. Since I just thought about this, 
being that she technically is of magic, but she's but that's it's weird. It's like okay, she is of magic, but she's immune to magic. So I guess that wouldn't work. I was like, they siphoned, so I guess she couldn't be siphoned because she's immune to magic. Maybe, that's, probably. That's a, I don't know. That's that's a good question. Speaking of siphoning, I was just, damn, stealing my <laughs> transition. Damn you! What did I say? Speaking of siphoning, those those exact words. <laughs> what is up with Caroline? She's getting what is siphoned. Up with those babies. That's that's the whole. That's siphoning. the question. We we just talked about this last we week did. too, and I was I was the one that pointed out that Caroline was very human in the flash forward. That she was locked in a closet, and Mike, I think it was Mike, was like, no, Vervain ropes. I was like, she wasn't even bound. She was, like, just locked in the closet with a gag over her mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, you know what? Now that makes more sense, now that we have confirmed that the babies are siphoning her. Yeah, but, I mean, that was our theory, was that the babies were siphoners, and they siphoned the vampire out of her. But, I mean, we've also seen vampires disabled and made useless by... Various forms of vervain, liquid vervain, vervain on a necklace, vervain ropes, you know. Yes. But, like, from what we saw, I mean, they are taking the vampirism out of her, the magic part, and they're desecrating her in that, in that actual, like, what's happening there. They're going to figure out how they can get the children to siphon her vampirism, but keep her alive? Because at this point... I mean, that's the closest thing that we're, we're going to get to the cure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is having the because the, the siphon worked for, um, it worked for uh, 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 Tyler. It worked for Tyler. It turned him from being a werewolf back to a, a person with you know the thing. We've seen the siphoning, right? Um, when it was done to, uh, because the the traveler's spell, like when that that whole thing, we saw anybody who entered Alaric was the first one that. Was, that lived like they treated his wound right yeah. mm -hmm. so if the the spell works the same way that the travelers which we don't know for sure because the traveler spell reverted everything back mm -hmm. that was kind of a different thing it was like a, a magic void mm -hmm. where this actually takes the magic out so i can't say for sure if caroline would die the way that like because we saw Stefan and Damon like reliving their gunshot wounds and they're drowning and you know all that we saw that when they were in the barrier spell so they're gonna have to have some kind of an explanation if Caroline doesn't like suffocate to death right? I think that's what it was right yeah and, she uh, Catherine suffocated her with a ah, with a pillow mm -hmm. yeah so I mean what they're probably gonna do have to do like a, a, a tracheotomy or something like that you know where they they stab like the pen or something into her lungs and. Uh, something to get air going where I, she doesn't actually suffocate because mentally she's going to not be able to breathe and she's going to be gasping and no one's going to be able to talk her down from that. I mean, I'm so. yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to play that because really the vampirism, the magic of it is the only thing keeping her alive because she's dead. Mm -hmm. Right. So if that magic is gone... But they did that to Alaric. They sucked the... Yeah. He was an original. He came back. They sucked it out of him and treated his his gunshot wound or yeah, stake or whatever it was. Okay, he so. walked over the barrier and um, Joe treated him as he walked over, and mm -hmm. he right. survived. So we know that it's, it's salvageable. It's been done before. So, so, right, it's, so just, it's just a matter of treating their their death. Mm -hmm. Just wait for it to happen and go for it. You know, so if they hook Caroline up to like oxygen or something and force her to breathe, you know, then that that'll work too. They don't necessarily have to stab her. You know, I think Valerie's gonna have something to do with it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, and it's it's a matter of at that point when it comes to realization that it can be treated. You know, it's like how many vampires are gonna want to cure? You know, how many vampires are gonna want to have siphony babies in their bellies? You know, how, how many people can pull that off? Oh, yeah, <laughs> but that that's another storyline that has me so confused. Was is the the Gemini Coven. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're going and saying, these are the last two of their kind. They're the last two Gemini. But we were taught that the whole Gemini Coven was linked to, excuse me, to the leader. Mm -hmm. If the leader dies, it shouldn't matter where they are. They should be dead no matter what. At that point, um, I, they tried to explain it. Kai was the leader at that point, right? Correct. He died. But during that whole transition where he was dying... They put like this 
protection over the babies and threw them into Caroline. Mm -hmm. And so, like, they kind of weren't existing at that point. They tried to explain it. It was, like, five or six episodes ago. So they became, like, they, while this was all happening, they were protected, and they kind of technically became the leaders. Yes. Being that they were the last. But Kai died before they actually were, un like, in Caroline after that. Like, there's that whole, like, transition. There was It was probably, like, a ten-second thing. Kai dies, they get into Caroline, and then they're the only ones surviving at that point. Everyone right. else dies off. Mm -hmm. Like, they cut, they severed that whole Gemini thing. They just, like, threw the whole Kai yeah, deal I out guess the window. witchy business. Because, I mean, like, mm -hmm. Valor even tried, uh, this episode, she tried to, cra you know, put a magic talisman on, on mm -hmm. uh, Caroline to have them siphon the magic from that as opposed to her. Yep. And it worked for a little bit until Caroline's foot started going dead. Up her leg and her arms yeah. again. <laughs> they started yeah. going to town uh -huh. all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Baby well, hungry. Baby hungry. There, she's getting close to popping. Um, and it's probably the thing is that they're even, close to popping. Mm -hmm. Even Stefan bringing multiple types of French fries to her did not help. I, no, I think that that's what started it. French fries. Definitely the uh, waffle. The French fries, fries are, are what caused the desiccation. Yeah. Yep. Waffle fries. They're deadly. Now I want waffle fries. <laughs> we all do, Kim. We all do. <laughs> yeah, but the difference is, I'm going to the diner after this. Oh, you suck. And I'm going to get gravy for my fries. <laughs> so, um, what is up with uh, Valerie and Mary Lou? Getting jealous over Bonnie. Oh, you mean Nora and Mary? Or Nora. Nora, 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 Nora. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Nora is baiting Mary Louise, definitely. That is something. She just wants to get back at her because Mary Louise took Julie inside. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably about it. Nora's just using Bonnie to uh, make Mary Louise jealous. And Bonnie caught on fairly quickly. Oh, like, yeah, hey, Bonnie knew. Oh, yeah. Get your shit together and go to fuck she knew, her. She knew from the very beginning, but she was playing along until it got to be a pain in the ass. Right. Yeah. And because... Bonnie is, like, the only one who has not been a absolute bitch towards Nora. Out of, like, everybody. So no, she's trying to give Nora a chance at a life. Like, she's, like, she's supporting her, you know, educational goals. And she's, like, you know, she's helping her, you know, and, become civilized. And basically. somewhere Nora appreciates that. So yeah. there's all that. And Mary Louise is just like... <sighs> she's a traditional old bat... That looks like a seventeen-year-old. I don't she, like her. You, if she were an old man, she'd be telling everybody to get off their lawn or off her lawn. Get off uh, my why lawn. Does, why does she have to be an old man to do that? An old lady could do that too. <sighs> yeah, they I can. mean, they can. But I've always but seen old men. That's say the that. route. But that's that. That is kind that's of the, the route. Path. Yeah, she is in that relationship. She is is the the more. How do I put it? <laughs> the traditional, <laughs> slow to adapt. Yeah. yeah. Well, like change. I mean, she's not traditional because, you know, she's doing the out of norm thing for, especially when uh, her timeline, which is being in love with a woman. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also another thing that's still weighing on her mind is that she can openly do this now. Whereas back in when she was, you know, able when she wasn't in the prison world that was taboo completely yeah it was taboo uh, yeah it was big time taboo in public mm -hmm. I've never played that game me either anybody oh, the board game taboo yeah I see yeah. it in Target and Toys R Us all so the I. time but like I have never played it yeah never played it. Huh. if I ever see it on sale I will get it Deal. So we can play it. Deal. I'm now morbidly curious. Is there any way we can make that a drunken game of taboo? Easily. We might. <laughs> Just drink. A so couple bottles of liquor and let's do it. All right. Uh, Woo. I don't. I, I'm sure there's a way to turn it into a drinking game, but yeah, we have to know the rules first. Mm -hmm. So anything can be turned into a drinking game. <laughs> Apparently, sure. last the other night, raiding was turned into a drinking game. Interesting. That sounds um, horrible. 
My own so, personal drinking game, apparently. So, the uh, Nora and whatever, they're, they're not the only ones having girl problems. Nope. Matt Donovan is having some girl problems. Do you with, think that's uh, going with to be Penny. a problem? Penny. Penny. Yeah. See a penny pick her up all the day, you'll have good luck. So you think the red I think that's what he's her. trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> you think you think she's a potential love interest for Matt? Oh definitely. Yes. I think that's exactly who he was alluding to in the flash forward. And um, unfortunately now we know that she dies. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Thank you, flash forward. Yeah. But the question is how it seems that he's on on uh, um, our Huntress's side, but not at the same time. I mean, he still has his connections to his friends, even if they eventually piss him off some way. Um, and as far as Petty goes, I think he's reeling her into this whole supernatural thing. I mean, obviously, because she's already witnessed it. Mm -hmm. But he's gonna, you know, try and train her and give her heads ups and, and just like this whole... Uh, organization, I want to call it, for the flash forward, she's going to be involved. She's just not going to end so well for her. Yeah. I mean, she got dragged into the whole thing. Like, mm -hmm. we learned that um, Julian had been inviting people back to the town yeah. to reclaim their homes and, like, fight for them and all that stuff. And that's when she follows Matt and a mm -hmm. vampire busts through the door. She unloads a full clip into the guy, and he's still standing. Yep. So Matt takes a couple shots. I think he only took one. I don't even remember. Yeah, one, bullet. Bullet. one bullet. One bullet. One yeah. wooden bullet. And that's when he's like, yeah, if you're going to become a, if you're going to be a police officer in Mystic Falls, you need to have wooden bullets. Did he even say police officer or did he just say wear a uniform in Mystic Falls? I think maybe wear, just wear a uniform. Just wear a uniform. Yeah. Okay. So, kind of had to fill her in on that quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're definitely going to try and take him down that road. I mean, everywhere I read, people are like, just get rid of Matt. He's a useless character. He doesn't do anything. And yeah, he's needed in the slightest sense, but it's true. He's just kind of hanging around. But, uh... I have, they've been yeah. trying to make him something this, this, this season, mm -hmm. definitely. They have, yeah. And if yeah. Penny isn't dead in the flash forward, like, if that's his life, that's his family, that's his girl and all that stuff... I have a feeling that Reyna is using her as like a bargaining chip to get Matt to do what she wants. Very, very well. Because be. remember the flash well. forwards, it's like, you know, he knocked out Stephanie's like, there, I did it. I never have to see you again. She's like, yeah, yup. Have a nice life. Yes. And it was, it was clearly Reyna. Yeah. Yep. So oh, yeah. we know that they're working together in some way, shape or form in the future. And not, and it's not a you know a mutual working day there. He's working for her begrudgingly, right? And and he also tells Stefan that uh, Caroline is back at home, safe and sound with Alaric. So further confirmation that Caroline and Alaric get together. Uh, it's so weird for me. I don't like it. <laughs> it, it is. It, I mean, yeah, it is kind of weird because it was there. You know, it's still especially like it's... <laughs> especially if her vampirism is gone and she's a human again. Like I, I, I know you know age shouldn't matter at that point, but it, it does because I. But don't forget, Alaric was also a vampire for all that time, so they yes. they equally didn't age together for that whole duration. He was still her teacher. He was still her teacher in high school. I'm she well was aware. Okay, and he was not, like thirty not something first, years yeah, old. But not the first time that that's happened. There's, there's, no, there's, there's... but. I know. How do you know he was thirty years old? We don't. How do you know he wasn't a fresh, you know, teacher right out, right out of college? Have you? We know he wasn't. We know he was either he was either in his, his later twenties or into his early thirties. Mm -hmm. That was it was a, that was a for sure thing. I mean, that's so, almost double her age. Not anymore. Well, yeah, but still, <laughs> I just think it just feels weird to me. I mean, I've, I've seen Alaric do all these other things, and, you know, Caroline, we've watched her since she was 16. It's just... She's still technically... She, oh, three years in the no, future. she's 18. Okay, so... I thought she was 18 when she got turned. The the actress that plays Cand uh, that plays Caroline, Candace Akala, is 28. Okay, in the, real life. <laughs> in real life. Real life. I'm just saying, real life. 
And the actor that plays Alaric, uh, Matthew Davis, uh, is 36. So in real life, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah well, in real life, it makes yeah. sense. They're, they're like nine years apart in real life. And that's that's fine. That's kind of normal. I've known people, yeah, that's actually plenty normal. The average marrying age is 15 years apart. Hmm. That's the... That's the average? Yeah, 15 average years like apart? Seven. Nope, it's 15. Is that because of all these gold-digging women going after older men? Probably. Older men? But, yeah, it's 15 years apart. No, that, that, that was a terrible thing to say. I'm so sorry. Please don't <laughs> <referring to laughs> <my last feminists. laughs> But, but I, mean, I mean, that's a valid five idea. Five and ten years is that's that's it, that's the norm. That's not that's not even that big of a. I guess it's just the way we <laughs> saw them grow as characters is what makes it weird for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's the reason why it's like weird. But okay, so what are they? Do we know what ages they are in in character? No. Caroline was eighteen when she turned, and I have no idea how old the lark is. Not a clue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, season one, he was a high school teacher. He was previously yeah. married. I'm saying early, the early 30s. And all that stuff, I would put him at 30. Mm -hmm. Fair assumption. 12 year difference? I put him, like I said, later, later 20s. Okay. I think I understood that. Weird, but not weird. It's... What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then finally, you know, the end of the episode, Stefan goes in with... Uh... Which one was it? Valerie? Yes, Valerie. Valerie. Goes in with Valerie uh, under a cloaking spell and just outright kills... Julian in front of everyone and no one all at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's like, you have, you know, you attack me in front of all my friends, they can't see you. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. And so dies Julian. So what is his I was horde? So happy. <laughs> yeah, I kind of was too. But how is that... Now what? Horde of vampires who are all there doing Julian's bidding and being his buddies. Now their boss man is dead. They're mm. just gonna go. They're just gonna leave. What is there if nobody's telling them what to do? Just, like, just be glad that the sire line doesn't work with the vampire that turned you. Yeah. You know, be glad it's only the original bloodline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if I'm not mistaken, is that how it worked in True Blood? No. No. You are mistaken. That is not how it works. No. But I there, gave up on True Blood are... after season two. I think it was similar as far as, you know, no, it wasn't. No, they were, the Sire thing in True Blood was, um, the vampire, the turned vampire had, like, it was kind of like siring it, with the hybrids. The yeah, turned... there was, it was control based, not, uh, they like, had... compulsion. Yeah, it was a thing until the Master released their turned vampire from it, they were, they could like sense their lo the, you know their master's yeah. location. They could feel their pain, and they were just like psychically linked to them, mm -hmm. basically. But as soon as they said, you know, I release you from your whatever or something like that, yeah. it was like the connection was just pew, broken, done. Severed, They're free. Yeah. Hmm. And I think I it was went not aware you had a PhD on True Blood. She made me watch how many seasons of it. I didn't make you watch. I shit. love True Blood. It was good. Oh. It had its good parts. I did enjoy a good portion of it. That witch with the the goat witch, but, what, I, I was done after that. I know, done. but here's my... Like, so. I started season three, and then when I went back and watched the old stuff, after the first two episodes, I said, if I would have started here, I would have said, fuck this show, it's the stupidest show on the planet. Because the se first season, first half of the first season is terrible. Mm. The only thing good is Jason's butt in the first half of the season. And... And the boobs of everyone he fucked in the first half of that season, from the guy's standpoint. Well, okay. So, is there anything else <laughs> vampire that related? No, Not okay, a fucking I thing. Uh, I own the whole book series from the True Blood series, so that's it. I, I did the, the books long before they started so coming out with Stackhouse novels. Yeah, the the books are good. 
Yeah, the books are good. The books are read, really good. I read a bunch of them. Um, so, yeah, I, but I, I love Mason Eric. All of a sudden, it oh, sounds boy. clear. Um, okay, so <laughs> I think that about wraps up our show. Mike. Are we going to talk about next episode? No. Okay, then. <laughs> Me. <laughs> next episode. Uh, the next episode is called This Woman's Work. Vampire hunter Rana Cruz arrives to Mystic, Mystic Falls. When complications from her supernatural pregnancy leave Caroline's life hanging in the balance, Stefan and Valerie take extreme measures to try to save her and the babies. Meanwhile, after uncovering a dark secret about Damon, Enzo uses the information to force Damon into helping him track down Rana Cruz, a ruthless vampire hunter who is on the loose. However, when Damon's actions inadvertently put everyone he loves in Raina's path, he's forced to make things right before it's too late. Cat Graham and Matt Davis also star. Also? Awesome. Mike just loves that part of the synopsis. So. Mm-hmm. I'm more wrapping my head around the whole Enzo recruits Damon to track down Raina. Meanwhile, Enzo's the one who reincarnated her. Well, I think the point was that he was supposed to reincarnate her and take her back to wherever she was needed. And then she got away. All right. I got you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh... So, Mike. Where can the people find you? It's just about to start doing that. You can find me on Twitter at Thilladrin right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kim. Where can the people find you? <laughs> And, uh, H-U-F-F-I-T-Y-P-U-F-F-I-T-Y-P-U-F-F-I-T-Y-P-U-F-F-I-T-Y-P-U-F-F-I-T-Y-P-U-F-F-I-T-Y-P-U-F-F-I-